Well, as you can see, our workroom is in absolute chaos. Um, there is a reason. It's we've got a new project on. It's the 4th of May 2020. We're still in lockdown. And uh, all sorts of projects we're trying to get them out of the way <coughs> while we've got uh, the time and the leisure for it. And um, this, and you know, we're very interested in home recording machines. So we had a couple in the uh, loft out of the way, and I thought this this is the time to get them out, see what we've got, and uh, get them going. So that's what we're going to do. And here we have not one but two. Echo radio corders, that's E.K. Cole of uh, Southend on Sea. Um, price complete five guineas, which was a tidy sum. Uh, they came out in about 1931, I think. I've been looking in old magazines for an advert. I haven't found one, but I'm pretty sure they're about 31. What makes them interesting is they're the first home recording device uh, that was um, marketed that was based on uh, electrical uh, reproduction electrical recording reproduction the others had all been mechanical recording um, so uh, anyway that's enough of that okay well let's do a bit of uh, unboxing which is quite fashionable on, <laughs> on youtube uh, this is a great this is a, a template made out of uh, 330 seconds steel to show you where to put that and we've actually got some records aluminium discs and we've got um, a base for the arm to fit in and uh, we've got uh, a control box that will fit in between your radio and this unit and there's a, a volume control likewise which all goes in line and then all important the head which is used both for um, <clears throat> recording and playback and looks very familiar to us as a 1930s actually it's about 1931 this came out and then what else is left? Oh well, the actual, the works itself, the traversing arm that will take us across the record. Unfortunately, this is seized up. This is, is it Mazak? Some sort of stuff that seizes up. And then the arm for replay, which is quite nice, um, and it's interchangeable. And you take off the recording um, arm and put this on to play the record back. Um, oh, and sorry, yes, last but not least, some cutting points and a support for the playback arm. Here we are and uh, this is how you connected it up. Um, and it's interesting to note that at this era the loudspeaker is not in the uh, wireless, uh, in the radio receiver. And the reason for that of course is because the vibration from a speaker would often set the electrode assembly of these earlier large valves vibrating that they would modulate the sound so there was like a form of feedback so this uh, dates it uh, to sort of late 20s early 30s by, by about 32 33 the speakers were inside the valves were better but, but i digress um, there's a connection box and um, you know you've got to have a uh, a loudspeaker output um, and you've got to have an input when you play it back and um, if you haven't got an input uh, on your radio receiver <clears throat> then don't uh, worry because you could get a valve adapter you've unplugged the audio valve or the first audio valve if there was more than one and you could plug in an adapter which would take the signal from the uh, pickup and play it back for you um, and so you see it's quite a ramshackle sort of thing you've got to have all, all the uh, pieces of equipment in fairly close proximity and um, I don't think uh, the ladies of the house were particularly keen on having separate loudspeakers and wireless sets let alone uh, you know wires running about everywhere that's usually they don't usually like that at all. Six. Okay what about the discs? Here they are well they're aluminium this is before the days of coated discs um, they come in envelopes, usually with a little bit of oil on them to stop because it's very highly polished aluminium and it does tend to uh, corrode very badly, I think you can see that. It's a sort of creeping spot corrosion uh, and it's, it's terrible. However, one of the discs, uh, which is actually I think this one, the one side of it's not bad and we're going to use this uh, come hell or high water. I mean, I've cheated, I've tested it already, and it, it kind of works, so, but I kept this uh, disc <laughs> for best. 
we're using this um, wind-up turntable which is a Garrard number 11 motor quite a nice uh, one and it, it came out it was, it was rescued out of a, a, a console gramophone and kept for purposes such as this um, and we've mounted the arm and we'll just go in and have a quick closer look at it the head is mounted upon an arm a slider at the back which it can it can move along and there's, a, there's a rest for it there so that you can change the needle a point which is about a 74 degree uh, point, uh, a cone, a cone, conical point. Uh, this is rotated by a gear here, and here is a, a wheel which is just inside the center spindle, which will um, rotate the transit screw. And you can't see it very well, but on the back of the head, there is a thin blade which actually goes into the um, thread on this bar here and so um, I'll show it you running. Because of the, the high amount of drag between this cutting point and the disc there is a, a disc carrier which has got three lugs sticking out there so that uh, when you put the disc of course has three corresponding holes so if you position it like so then it is, oopsie day, it is tied. You can then put that over the center hole and then you can actually turn it on. Oops. And um, off it goes. And it's, the discs are quite flat. This is a terribly corroded disc, but if you move it along, it'll come off this little stand. And if you put it down, it will start to cut a groove, which I think you can see. Um, we're using up this disc because it's, it's corroded, just as an example. Um, and you put it back and stop it and lift off and um, let's show it you and uh, there is the groove we've just cut um, right well it's high time we recorded some actual sound and put these grave matters to the proof but first we have to put in this transformer because we're going to be driving uh, this head from a modern amplifier. Well, I say modern, it's a NAD, it's about 30 years old, but it is a solid state amplifier and it works into speakers of 4 or 8 ohms. Um, and the impedance of the cutting head there, uh, well the DC resistance is 800 ohms, which it isn't going to work. But bearing in mind that a valve uh, would have a high impedance uh, and which the output transformer would take down to 4, 8 or 12, 15 ohms for the loudspeaker. If we take this and put it the other way round, um, our signal out of our loudspeaker will go into a low impedance winding and the amplifier will think it's just a loudspeaker and it will be transformed up uh, into uh, a much higher impedance and indeed a higher voltage and so I'll just get that wired up. An un that is an unholy mass of wires. Uh, I do hope it works. Here's a, a wave file uh, which is approximately contemporary or slightly later than the machine. It's 1933, uh, a tune I love called uh, You're Getting to Be a Habit with Me, which I think is from 42nd Street, uh, played by Billy Cotton and his band, which at the time uh, was a very muscular sort of band. Uh, he still often used a banjo in the rhythm section as late as <coughs> 1933. And I lo love the record and play it quite often. And uh, it'll come out of one, one of these speakers. You just say to wow! Oh, the umph. I'm afraid it's, the umph is not going to get onto our aluminium disc. But, um, right, uh, so that is speaker is our monitor and we will turn the other channel of the amp uh, through into the cutting head.
Here we go. It's all or nothing. I've coated the disc with oil. I forgot to tell you that. I did try WD-40, but the oil was cu customary, and it does seem to work better, so we'll fire up and um, get ready to go. I shall fire up the audio file. Oopsie daisy, that was a bit too soon. I shall put the pickup down. Put the... It's, it's actually... I keep calling it a cutter. It's not cutting, it's embossing. Here we go. Yes, uh, it could be better, uh, quite a lot better actually, um, but it was an early stage, um, you know, using the same uh, transducer for recording and replay. You notice that it's only a six and a half inch disc and the tray only goes up to eight inch because they realised the drag of embossing on the disc uh, would pre preclude, usually preclude a ten inch record, although those did come along later especially when electric motors came in that, that, that could have a bit more torque. Uh, but anyway, it's an interesting phase in the development of uh, home recording, and I hope you liked it. Thank you very much. Bye.